everyone. I'm coming to you from my craft room. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Monica Lipscomb, and this is one of the many faces of trigeminal neuralgia. I'll just give you a very brief history on me. I have bilateral type 1 trigeminal neuralgia, and I've had four brain procedures uh, to try to rectify it. And I was just in emergency the night before last to get an infusion to try to settle down the major flare I've been having. So in this moment, I feel well enough to do this video. So let's get going. I've been reading about different locations all over North America that are doing different things for Trigeminal Awareness Day. Now, October is Facial Pain Awareness Month, and October 7th is Trigeminal Neuralgia Awareness Day. Trigeminal neuralgia is pain from the largest nerve in your, from your brain, tri, and most people feel their pain in one of the three branches, or all of the three, or two of the three, and it is known as the most severe pain known to mankind. So it's pretty awful and bless all of my fellow warriors. So I was reading that several cities all over are doing all these different things to commemorate the day. Um, here in the Edmonton area, the high level bridge will be lit up in teal. So anybody that lives locally and wants to go look at that, it's absolutely beautiful. And, it, and unusually, we, our local group has a get together, but with COVID, we're unable to do that. I saw that somewhere else they were doing a lantern walking ceremony together with their group. I thought that was so beautiful. It sounded so wonderful. So I came up with the idea, wouldn't it be great if we could just make a lantern, each one of us, and because of the way it is this year with COVID, we can't gather and walk with our lanterns. And, and also some people who suffer, it gets cold around October 7th and the cold and wind irritate the nerves. So, doesn't mean you have to be left out. You can make a lantern and just place it on your front porch or make a whole bunch of them. When your neighbors ask, why do you have those beautiful teal lanterns on your porch? You can make them aware of trigeminal neuralgia. So, let's get going and I'll show you how to make this simple, easy lantern. The ingredients you're going to need is some tissue paper. And my husband went and picked this up for me at the dollar store, and it's teal. And if they don't have teal, you can get turquoise. Um, I, this pickle jar size jar. I wanted to use one of my canning jars, like a mason jar, but we didn't have any. So this was just a literally a pickle jar. That size is really nice. Although you could make smaller ones too with... Um, the little jelly jar size, some white glue. Mine's in a bowl because I get mine in jumbo size because I do so many crafts. So I poured some in there. And then you need something to put in the bottom of your lantern when you're finished. So either one of these safer candles and votives that don't have a flame, or you could just use a regular votive if you want to. And then if we decide to put a handle on it, we, I'll show you at the end, we could use wire, cording, or any other elements to make a carrying handle for it. So, first thing you need to do is rip up pieces of this. And you're just basically doing like I used to make paper mache. And this is the balloon, and you would just glue the pieces all over in any shape you want to. So you can cut this or tear it, whatever is easiest, and just cover up your jar.
got everything all covered. Looks really cool. And I think the more jagged and rugged the edges are, the cooler it looks when the lights turn through. So now I did two jars. You can see a little one over here. And now I'm going to show you how I made this cute handle here. And it's pretty sturdy. So I took some heavy uh, ship rope, I think this is called. You can get it at the Dollar Tree. And I simply measured it around the mouth of the jar first. And then I did a little bit of an overlap, a little bit more than you would need. And then I just cut that off. So all the jars will be different. The measurements are, are, all, are all going to be different. Then, I'll move the jar out of the way. I just took a piece of the jar. It's still attached to the big, big loop. So I took some glue, glue stick glue, and made a big long strip. And then just turned it up on itself onto the one that's still in the roll. So the big, long, long strip. So we're gluing it to itself like that. And be careful because glue guns are very, very hot. I've used mine so much, I'm sure my fingers are made of asbestos at this point. So just make sure it's really glued. Even this little in free piece, I want that to be glued too. Because you don't want your handle falling and breaking your jar, you know. And again, you could do this with leather. You could crochet a really thick chain from strong, strong yarn. You could braid ribbon together, anything. This is just what I had handy. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to lie my jar on the side. Now, you see this is the part that's still attached to the big long roll. This is the piece that I cut that goes around the neck of the jar. Here's the front, here's the other side. So we're just going to start with one end of that and we're going to glue it with our glue gun. Apply a little glue first and then apply a little of the one that goes around your jar. So let's start on this end where I kind of glued that handle already on there. So I've got that much glued. Now you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep gluing and then I will cut a piece to match on the other side to be the handle. So, I'll carry on gluing till we almost come right across from this handle. It will make sense. I was just showing it to my husband. He goes, but I don't get it. I go, just watch. You'll get it. Sometimes things make sense when you're doing them. Keep going, and it's really stuck down there. Now we're going to get to this point. See where our handle's going to be? And at this point, we can decide how long we want the handle to be and cut that off of the main spool of string there. So I'm just going to put a little bit more glue here. There. And now I have to glue the handle almost across from itself, you see, right here. I'll just tuck it underneath, apply glue to this part, that's why I love glue guns, there. And then do the same thing I did at the beginning. Just tuck that right on up there. And this is where it can be hot, remember. Be careful. Always have 
a glass of cold water nearby. If you ever burn your finger, just dip it in the cold water. That's the safest way to work with a glue gun. Unless you're a master, like I am. No sooner do I say that, am I gonna, I'm gonna probably end up getting burnt. So, knock on wood, Monica. <laughs> okay, so the last little bit here, just gonna glue that down. Perfect time, just about to run out of glue. Glue the handle and that piece down. Secure it and then just overlap this. It's a bit too much. And glue that last piece down here. Come on, glue. Glue the last bit down. Hold it, secure it. And then trim off this ledge. There. So now you've got a handle around your jar. And this handle looks a little bit longer. So if you're going for a walk with your trigeminal neuralgia lanterns, or TN as trigeminal neuralgia is called, your TN lanterns for awareness, there you go. So I'm about to show you the different options for putting a light inside of them. Of course, you can use these guys. But this is unfortunate, you know, the battery ones. And this is probably what I would prefer to use. But unfortunately, the battery is going on this one. And it, the light is so feeble. I mean, here, see, it's barely a little twinkle. So it wouldn't be worthwhile to even put, you wouldn't be able to see. Well, maybe, but not very much. So yeah, let's turn off this light. And this light. And see, there's very little light in there. So for today, I'm going to use an actual lit. Let's candle. use a lit one. I just have a little votive like this. Drop that in the bottom, make sure it's centered. And of course, if you have these rope handles, you need to be very aware that you don't want to burn your rope handle. Come on, candle. There we go. So you can see how pretty that looks and how pretty it would look on your front porch. And for the, the bigger one, Again, this was an uh, idea of my husband's, and I think it's brilliant. Because I haven't been out to the store in a little while, I didn't get what I need, the kind I needed. But he said, Monica, why don't you put little mini lights in there? So the kind I need, of course, are the kind that don't require electricity. So let's take the big one over here. These are some mini lights but these are mini lights that are plugged in but to me they give the, the best and the safest lighting so there you go lanterns to bring about awareness for trigeminal neuralgia give that a try let your kids help you let your classroom help you and while you're working on the project, explain to them about facial pain awareness and trigeminal neuralgia awareness. The more aware we make everybody of this awful disease, the sooner there's going to be a cure. The sooner people will not have to go to the dentist and get most of their teeth removed because they think it's a, um, a rotten tooth. The sooner people have more empathy for people when they go to the emergency department and give them the correct medications. So it's all about awareness. So I hope you guys make these and hopefully next year when COVID is all finished, 
we can all take our lanterns and go for a walk. So thank you so much for watching. Talk soon. Bye-bye.